us at the bar, please. Welcome to Tavern Tales, a curated 5e Dungeons & Dragons adventure set in the tales of the Yawning Portal campaign module by Wizards of the Coast. Previously on Tavern Tales, we've arrived at the dungeon. Actually, we've gotten to the dungeon. This might be the fastest dungeon initiation ever. So let's see what's in there, shall we? Come sit down and drink with the enemy. Raise a glass and toast to the enemy. And I'm not gonna do this on my own. So come sit down and laugh with the enemy. Raise a glass and sing to the enemy. And I'm not gonna do this on my own. So I... So, who would like to go first? Let's start with the lowest roll. That would be Vulcan. All right, Vulcan, what'd you get? I rolled 11. All right, so something minorly good happened, but humorous on the trip. Minorly good? Yeah, minorly positive. So not like, we found a million gold, right? So, But that could be the humorous piece of it. We found a million gold, but it was all melted together and weighed like 6,000 pounds and none of us could pick it up. And we were like, <laughs> dang it, stupid dragon. So during the rickshaw ride, because Vulcan is having to pay extra, Vulcan decides to review the contract that he's written with this air elemental, and he offers to give the air elemental more vacation days. Okay. But the air elemental quickly points out that he already has a bunch of vacation days, so essentially, I've just doubled the vacation days that he's getting. Oh, lovely. Yes. Yeah. And you forgot to cap the rollover, so Correct. if the vacation days aren't used used he still gets to, or it still gets to maintain and keep them and now your know, rickshaw driver stuber has like 143 days of vacation days due to the duplication error and the lack of rollover cap essentially you're like that is half a year i'm gonna lose <laughs> but honestly your air elemental doesn't get weekends and is available at all hours so it's kind of a it works out in his favor also the air elemental based on this you kind of see the that the air elemental Stuber perhaps is viewing the whole pulling you around as his vacation from something more complicated and difficult and is enjoying and not as why these vacation days continue to roll over that he never seems to use or it. Cool. Do you speak any elemental languages? I'm going to assume that Inferno is not an elemental no. language. No. Nope. Like primordial or oral I think is the air elemental. talk to your Yeah, elemental. you speak primordial, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you can chitty chitty chat chat yeah we can set up pranks on you that's not the contract but <laughs> is that a zuvis i don't is pr pranks a zuvis thing pranks is definitely a page thing are you skilled in pranks <laughs> page loves characters that prank people <laughs> but i don't know zuvis seems like no. so this is business and he does the like open palm chop into hand thing yeah. like it seems like a zuvis thing <laughs> Yep, I could see that. <laughs> cool. All right, yeah. So as a result, your ride is smoother. You get a better understanding of what's going on with Stuber and yourself, especially since Zuvis can understand some of the things that Stuber has been saying. This whole time, mm -hmm. it's like magic. Yep. Yeah, things are going well with your rickshaw. It's such a cool picture. <laughs> it really is. This winged tiefling riding a rickshaw pulled by an air elemental right next to a hippocampi pulled foamy and bubbles. <laughs> war chariot like grecian war chariot is what i'm picturing here yep. with a a triton at the helm and a uh, a pony riding doll that's <laughs> <laughs> a fire pony <laughs> he's got little he did footprints just like zagris i'm You're imagining right. it's like a my little pony yeah style pony yeah <laughs> Like, I kind of wanted just like non-red hair, but maybe it changes with, with his mood. I don't know. So yeah, now I'm picturing Twilight Sparkle <laughs> it was flaming. because yeah. I think Twilight Sparkle, like the voice Tara Strong is the voice of Twilight Sparkle. And I'm almost positive that she has voiced a version of Harley Quinn as well. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, what'd Probably. you roll, Marie Claire? I rolled a 14. 
So minorly positive, but funny. But funny. Okay. There's a a roadside vendor that is selling maps to White Plume Mountain, but it's like a star map. Like these are your vacation spots that you should hit up on the way. (laughs) Oh, okay. So camping site locations that are going to be good for an adventuring party that wants to get in there. And yeah, like, face like so it's nice and easy on the way there, but like nothing on the inside, obviously, but it's just everything on the on the way. Cool. Uh, Zuvis is the one who spots this guy. You're really close at this point. So this might happen later or earlier, depending on what happened with your role mm-hmm. next. But you're really close. You're past that last town. You come upon this stall that has like great camping spots for adventurers to White Plume Mountain with a little pocket of maps and whatnot. Zuva spots it, pulls over next to it, and uh, approaches the vendor. Marie Claire is going to play the vendor. Hello there, young uh, uh, fish. <laughs> I'm I'm not a fish, but uh, hello. I haven't seen one of you before. And I am not young. I'm likely older than you are. Oh, but it's the mileage. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You look like you walk yourself and I do not. That's true. What are you selling here? Oh, this is a... Oh, I just realized what happened. Zuvis was caught off guard because Zuvis wasn't the first person to be impolite and rude. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, you got me first. Damn it. <laughs> In fish society, that's a one up. <laughs> like literally got one up on me. This is a triple A map of the next area. Mm. AMA recommends it. <laughs> Alchemists, magicians, and associates. I am part of that designation. I appreciate. Do you have your member card on you? <laughs> Do I? You get- can get ten percent off the map if you have your membership card. Zuvis <laughs> presents his membership card, but it's not a card. It's um a very specific alchemy tube that gets created, and it has to be a specific color and smell in mm. order to pass as a membership card. It is just hand that over. <laughs> and of course, magicians, being sorcerers, have uh, some sort of prestige digitation piece that comes with it because yeah. it's something they all know. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Here's the map. It has camping and where you want to avoid that nest of nettles. All right, you get advantage on your survival check. I don't need to hear any more of this. <laughs> you get advantage on your survival check in setting up your base camp going into White Plume Mountain. <laughs> what is the name of this erstwhile individual? Oh, I'm Jiminy. <laughs> 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 That's a little name tag, Jiminy. Okay. That's funny. Write that down. That's going to be relevant. Well. Maybe. <laughs> and our final roll. How did you do? I got a nat 20. <laughs> I figured. I saw the Kraken head come up on the Kraken die. Yep. All right. What amazing, interstellar, wonderful thing occurred on the adventuring path for your character and for the group, for the party? When they took a break to just rest their legs and let their companions rest. Zuvis went to go relieve himself in the bushes and where he went to relieve himself, there was a satchel full of potions and there's no one around to claim them. So he took them. Unmarked potions. Yep. How many? Eight. Okay. Well, uh, I, yeah, I'm glad you didn't go longer because you <laughs> get to write out the list of all eight potions and what they look like. 25. <laughs> I know, right? Then I would have been like, please describe or at least write out on a separate page all the description on each line what each of these potions looks like. So the what does the bottle look like? What is the contents of it look like? How is it stoppered? Good ways to describe it and differentiate them because all of the potions are different and they all do different things. And they can be like actual real potions from the book, right? Make stuff up. Make stuff up. Make stuff up. Yes, you have found a bag of potions. Mm-hmm. We can come back to that later because you're no doubt writing out the descriptions <laughs> right now and you've given yourself work. And just to clarify, I can make up what the potions do? No. So they you have to be actual know what potions. They look like. yeah. You just know what they look like. That's all I know is what they look like. You, yeah, and you're going to describe them for me and then we'll figure that out and uh, you could make arcana checks or whatnot checks <laughs> to determine because you're an alchemist and you rolled a natural 20 so I'm not going to be harsh on you. You will be able to figure out what these potions do, but yeah. Okay, yeah. so they can just be simple descriptions. They don't yeah. have to be super convoluted. Well, they can be. Look, the more you detail in the work you put into them, the better the potions are going to be, right? Potion of kaboom. 
<laughs> that's the work Aaron's putting into yeah, his potions. That's how, yeah, <laughs> right. right? Blunt, uh, blunt instrument. So as is the want of my wonderful player base, you bought no real equipment of any utility for yourselves other than basic supplies. Asked no questions other than the very basic questions. But I was prepared. Should you have gotten more complicated with much more complicated answers of dire depredations and interesting factoids? But I didn't need to be that prepared. So I left that book upstairs thinking, eh, they're not going to answer those questions. And you met my expectations. You did assume correctly. So we're just going to move right into this. Going to do a quick whitewash. You've set up your base camp. It is safe. It is secluded. It is protected. Please roll. Whoever has the best survival check, roll with advantage as provided by the map. <laughs> that would not be me. I so have a zero. A zero. Plus one. A plus one. One. And a plus one. Aren't you glad you got that advantage? One of you roll two d20s to set up your base camp. You're the leader. There we go. In your Grecian chariot. <laughs> your greasy chariot. I'm what are you kidding me? 20 and a seven. <laughs> <laughs> 21. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it is all of those things. It is protected. It is secluded. It is everything you needed. And it is entirely because of that map. And you know it for a fact because the die you added to the die pile was the advantage die. And it gave you the 20. Otherwise, you were sitting on an 8, which would have meant you were coming back to only one of your rides still be in there at the end of this dungeon. So... Awesome. Your fancy, fantastical elements and creatures and whatnot are well protected, well cared for. Everything is done. You got a great base camp you can come back to at a moment's notice. It is secluded, protected. No one is going to get in there and get in the way of it and have any negative deleterious effect upon it. It gives you a great deal of comfort to leave extra supplies and extra things that you do not need to take into a dungeon with you and weigh you down right from the get-go. You reach the mountain. Plume. White smoke. Coming up the top there is an entrance that you've been made aware of and a path that w walks up to it because you are my players you do take some time to explore the surrounding area to see if there's an other way in because that's what we did in forge of fury and i know that you as players are experienced and remember that well to know that potentially finding an alternative way in is advantageous however you've spent the time maybe a day or two to explore the environs to see if there's any other way in the only other way in that you can determine is coming out the top of the mountain and that is very hot and very steamy and very dangerous Dangerous. It does not appear to be a viable entrance spot unless you can fly, fall without taking any damage, and endure extreme heat. Since the entire group is not all three of those things, maybe you're one or two of them. Mm. Like we've got a tiefling here. He's resistant to fire, but only resistant, not immune to it. It's yeah. still going to do damage and hurts as him. And some of you may have the ability to fall without taking damage, like uh, do a little bit of a feather fall or something. Quaff a feather folly potion or our alchemist here, but not resistant and immune to fire. So this obviously not a great entrance. So you check out the normal standard entrance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this wonderful picture that they've drawn because this is really indicative of where you are. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah, it looks so nice. Look at that artwork. I, I like the, the the giant sign. There's a dead dragon up in the corner. Yes, that's just art. <laughs> <laughs> there is a dragon. <laughs> You've arrived at White Plume Mountain. It stands alone in a vast area of dismal moors and tangled thickets. You've left your horses and supplies hidden away in sconced encampment. You've checked it all around. You have found something called Dead Knoll's Eye Socket. That's what it's called. It is a small natural cave in the side of the hill of the mountain itself. This is on the south slope. The Dead Knoll's Eye Socket leads to the wizard's mouth which is what the entrance of the cave is known as, which is weird. So it's got two names. Oh, and what's cool is that the top of the mountain seems to breathe. It slowly inhales and then blasts out a large cloud of steam that slowly trickles about, especially on a cold day. It looks especially white and smoke-like, but it is in fact steam that is erupting from the top because you flew over and you got to check at that. And I don't know if that's what it is. A cave is eight feet in diameter and about 40 feet long. So eight feet around. Just just tall enough for everybody in the group. The ceiling and walls of the cave are slick with condensed steam that runs down them, and the floor is covered with several inches of fine muck. Mud galore. And after careful probing in the muck, you've banged upon something metal, and you have found a trap door with a rusted iron ring set into it. After clearing away the muck around this trap door, forcing it open, 
which takes a goodly amount of prodigious strength, because this book is calling for a DC 20 strength check. And I'm not too sure this party is inherently strong. I'm strong. Plus four. So, Plus four. Oh, you're strong as well? Yeah, I'm a I'm a uh, Oh, yeah, you're war a smashy one. Okay, so. I am not at all. <laughs> you're Only two thirds inherently strong. <laughs> The two of you managed to root this thing up together without having to make a check because that's more than enough that's needed. You've bypassed the door, leads you down into a drop uh, of a 20 foot vertical shaft with little rungs of a ladder that then leads to a spiral staircase going down and you have entered the dungeon. Yeah. The staircase is badly rusted, but appears to be sturdy. The air inside the passageway is warm humid and rather foul you reach the bottom of the stairs with a splash hmm. the floor is submerged beneath a foot of water it is pitch black it's gonna take a bit to learn everything on these our fishy character and our warforged you feel a thrumming sensation uh, like a vibration um, it happens every 30 seconds or so not an actual sound just a feeling are we able to determine or sense what it is or what's causing it yeah, why don't you make a survival check the two of you no 11 my luck has run out now one that's also extremely lucky too though so you still have rolled two 20s and a one now today the <laughs> 11 is enough for you to know that it is in time with the geyser of steam oh okay You're just feeling that pressure change in the air as the steam is so it's rhythmic so it could yeah. be like it could be natural kind of like how yellowstone is natural but most likely i think it's mechanical mm -hmm. based on my mechanical brain so the spiral staircase went down like a hundred feet before it splashed into this water you're in the dark what do you do get out a torch who here can see in the dark falcon has 60 feet of dark vision nice i don't think i can no why would you be able to fish folk the seas get very dark you don't live down there well god <laughs> You're like, well, I guess that makes sense. Okay, fine. I wish I had some dark vision. I don't think I have dark vision. Okay. Vulcan, you can see the path leads out ahead of you for 60 feet. And then you're like, oh, I don't see much further than that. Also, it's dark vision. So still not. Not 100% yeah. clear. Yep. So what do you do? Well, Vulcan's comfortable taking point. Just okay. kind of leading because I've got the. The other two can't see anything. They don't even know that you've moved to take point other than some splashing in the water. Freaking cool. I can talk to animals that breathe water. Oh, we can't talk. I don't breathe water. So everybody, there's this um, rhythmic gick timing to the rumbling i think it's related to the steam upstairs you feel it too definitely i can feel um, it but reminds me sure. of my clockwork a little bit i wasn't sure what it was but that that would make sense so i think maybe there's like although i've heard naturally that sometimes you can get things like that happen naturally but i bet you there's some sort of machine it's really funny to you vulcan because while you know they're talking to each other and ignoring you completely they're not even really looking at each other because they can't see each other <laughs> ah so they're like like zuvis is looking at the wall well they're looking almost towards you yeah. because they know where the sound of each other's voices is but it's like <laughs> it's like this yeah it's like, like dating in the dark wait zuvis yes do we have any light I am attempting to meditate into my memory bank and determine if I have any elemental abilities to assist with sight. Okay, well, you bought a Dungeoneer's pack and it yeah, comes with... I got some torches. One sec. May I have a torch? I'll hand you a torch. I hope it does not cook me. Burnt light fish the is the worst. This room, this area is extremely humid. So when you light the torch, it does light. It does shed the normal amount of light, but it gutters fitfully in the humid air and definitely the bright glow of the fire is muted but i'm not going to suggest that it's like now you only get 24 feet and 20 30 feet of distance because whatever right it sheds bright light for 30 feet and dim light for an additional 30 you've lit your torches they give off a fitful gout the smoke comes off them pretty regularly from just how much i mean you're, you're literally standing in almost a foot of water which is nice for you but then when the torch lights up you can see and now your dark vision reveals to you as well there is floating on the water is splotches of green and white subterranean Algae. Oh, yummy. This algae happens to also cling in patches to the walls and ceiling all the way down the corridor in front of you. Triton's going to bend down and pick up a patch of algae and say, oh, this cave is stocked with snacks. And he's going to take a bite. Um, do you, you're just going to eat it or are you going to do any sort of sniff uh, he's, test? He's going to check it. Yeah. yeah. So he takes it in his hand and he yeah. uses his other hand to try and sense if it's... He microwaves it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he made a hand 
scent sandwich, but what what do you what does this sense do? What are you doing? He's trying to determine if it it's is wet. consumable. All right. You know, sniff test. Uh, roll a survival check to see if you can consume this algae. Cool. I mean, you definitely can consume it because if is it going to have any safe de- to deleterious effect? Yes. <laughs> no. So three. You don't know at all if this is safe or not. Mom, mom, you hear your mom? Yeah. Mom did talk about dungeon mold and how there's a certain type of dungeon mold that is like a delicacy if you can get it. But you're not too sure if mom said that it was like green and white or if she said it was purple. In fact, you're not even sure what color mom was talking about when she talked about dungeon mold. Mom also had one of those like crazy hippie long stares like she's remembering a trip she took a (laughs) drug trip she took as you're holding this mold he's gonna take in his pack he has a leather satchel Mm -hmm. he's gonna pull that out and he's gonna collect some and put it in this satchel it's like a waterproof oiled satchel so he can like yeah keep dry it out or check on it later yeah okay the water definitely is brackish alkaline not not potable you would not want to be breathing it for one and you definitely don't want to be consuming it for another it's going to do bad things to your insides okay your gut flora will not be fauna all over it the question is will it grow mold on me <laughs> who knows i may need a deep cleaning after this you progress down this corridor till it ends abruptly in a wall but as you get closer you realize that the left hand side of that wall is still pitch black and darkness and not showing an algae covered wall so the path suddenly turns abruptly to the left uh, with a 10 foot opening and then proceeds straight ahead to a three pronged path forward but something squats in the space where the corridors converge and we can't tell what it is not at this point because it's outside that 60 foot right Mm. it's just on the edge of the dim light as you come around the corner you can see there is a creature sitting in this I'm gonna say they're not in the water because that sounds just ridiculous and sad that there's like a piled up amount of debris and maybe former adventurers gear or something Mm. that is allowing this thing squatting there can't quite make out yet to uh sit above the water it is in a uh, a 10 foot by 10 foot like the walls are 10 foot by 10 foot and the corridor goes down a ways and the roof itself in this particular juncture is also only 10 feet tall and it's all darkness there's no like sky there's light no natural through. light at all it is only cast mm. when you come around the corner vulcan sees this first this dim figure in the distance can't really make out what it is but when the torches come around the corner, you can definitely tell this, whatever this creature is, because it's a creature, it's it's alive, because you can see the torchlight reflected oh, in the creepy. eyes like a cat sort of thing. Like a cat's eyes would reflect light in the darkness. Well, and it's not like we can hide or be stealthy because it can see our torches. And you're sloshing through the water, too. Yeah. What do you do? You're about 60 feet away from that creature and the three branches of the path ahead. I think we should approach cautiously and try to speak with this creature. Maybe it can aid us in our mission. Uh, I mean, generally speaking, if you don't piss in somebody's cornflakes, they don't piss in your cornflakes. I feel like you are correct. However, we can provide an opportunity of an alliance with this creature, but be ready to potentially have to fight it. I mean, that's fine. I don't know if we have to really ally with this creature more so to see if we can procure any information as to how long they've been down here if they came alone. You would say that. You never want to work with anyone else but yourself. Wow. Do you guys need some counseling? That would benefit more than one person and therefore he likely would not attend. I, oh. Shall we try the diplomatic route? I want to hear what my good friend over here wanted to say before you rudely cut him off. I already told you the fishing net thing was an accident. <laughs> but fine, we can try your diplomacy. It's funny because that's my whole job. <laughs> <laughs> diplomacy. <laughs> diplomacy. <laughs> I wonder what language this creature speaks. You seem to be far more learned than admittedly myself, so I assume you would be the one doing a majority of the talking. I am surprised by you admitting that. Perhaps there is a place for friendship between us, if you continue to compliment me. Let's not roll out the red carpet quite yet. (laughs) I feel like this is going to be an interesting dungeon with all the fact we can't see. (laughs) We maybe should have thought of that. You know. We are going to, I think, approach cautiously. Yes. And I will say out, creature of darkness, we mean no harm. We would just like to chat. Uh, Human feminine head rises up 
and is visible to you in the guttering torchlight. What does this woman's face and head look like, Aaron? Fairly haggard, I would say. You know, crow's feet, wrinkles on the forehead. and Oh, so I, by haggard, they meant like tired. No, actually, that works better. I'll talk okay. that. Yeah. Haggard and tired. Yes. A tired expression. They are royal or regal or queenly in some capacity. How do you know that they have that regal bearing? What is it about the face that tells you that? They have a piercing on their left eyebrow that is very common with one of the noble families in the area. Can I see the piercing from where I am? Or sure, no? why not? Glitters in the torchlight. It's a jade and it's in the shape. I don't know if I can really see the shape, but it's in like the shape of a, of a monkey. Okay. Monkey piercing in their left eyebrow. Love it. And pick some sort of famous actress to help us envision the face of this individual before us. Why are you shaking your head? Because I saw the smirk on your face and I immediately thought who you were probably thinking. Oh, please write this name down and then we can see if you were right. No. Quickly, quickly write it down. Yes, no. write it down. That way we know you're right or not. No, just write it down. Write it down. I'm curious. <laughs> Don't cover it for me. He can't see. You want to know what you're saying? Okay. Oh, I see. I was going to say Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, that's a good one. What did you write? I thought you were going to say Amber Heard, the look that came on your face because she's oh. been in the media oh, so much. no. <laughs> My my first thought was Angelina Jolie was what I was. Mm. Yeah, she's also a fish person in the yeah. Aquaman movies. Makes sense. Okay, so it is Gwyneth Paltrow's face with this piercing in the left. I like that. That's great. Yeah, and uh, raises her head up and looks at you as you approach the group of you. Like you're all walking forward, mm-hmm. right? Sloshing forward through this water. Does she respond? Huh. I'm not a creature of the dark. I can see you though. Well, you're sitting here in the dark, and if you can see in the dark. I believe that implies you are a creature of the dark. Are you supplicants before the wall? What is a supplicant? How far, how close have you gotten? Uh, with 20 feet. Well, you're only 20 feet away now? Is that yeah. decent? I mean, yeah. You gotta be 20 feet away to have a conversation. All right. Yeah, you can hail yeah. someone further than that. And you're just sloshing towards them. You get to 20 feet. You can now see beyond the head of this individual is, in fact, the body of a lion. Cool. Mm-hmm. It's a Head of a human, body of a lion. And now you can see the Gwyneth Paltrow features have a lionin aspect to them. She's got really sharp canines sort of thing. A thicker brow. Her hair is this big mane. And uh, she's wings behind her. Oh, stretched out across her lion back. But she definitely looks bedraggled and damp. And make an insight check. Everyone? Mm-hmm. <gasps> hey! Oh my god. What is going on here? How'd you do, Aaron? 13. Yeah, wet and bedraggled. Bespeaks unhappy, but... Mm. 15. 15. Wet, bedraggled. Why are they here? Yeah. Is immediately one of your questions. And twenty natural. So what does it come out to? Twenty. You got nothing else <laughs> on an insight check, eh? I am not wise. No, not wise in the ways of man or the world around you. Makes you sense. Are a, you are a robot. I like to learn. <sighs> This thing is not here by choice. Mm. It is a gynosphinx. It's going to ask you a riddle. Doesn't want to ask you a riddle. Doesn't even really want to be here. Nat 20. I do, that and, and it might be like in an arcane little bit. I have a lot of arcane, so I might recognize them because of the... Maybe, but it, yeah. what's happening here is just you're catching the... The emotions. The inflection of the way they asked, are you a supplicant before the wall? I've gotten used to the vibrations of people's voices as a lie detector or something like that. <laughs> it's not actually any sort of like emotional understanding. I, I, I'm going to assume it's that. You got lucky. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm going to go and um, just whisper very gently so they can hear me. Sure. Friends. Adventures. I believe this is a sphinx. We will have to answer some sort of riddle. They don't want to ask us the riddle. So maybe we can convince them to give us an easy riddle. I can hear you. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> can you give us an easy riddle? <laughs> you get the one riddle. Can you give us the easy one? There's an options. <laughs> There's only <laughs> roll persuasion. <laughs> A plus eight. I know. That's why I'm saying roll persuasion because while Marie Claire not particularly persuasive, her character. Yeah. So that's a that, that's a twenty three. Oh is my god. Inherently quite persuasive. <laughs> there is a twinkle in the Gwyneth Paltrow eye. You can see Vulcan as our little whisper. You didn't whisper in the character voice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you want my which team? I would love to hear you try that. <laughs> I want to know what Harley Quinn whispering is going to sound like. So please. Yeah. Like, do you want me to do the whole thing? No, I just okay. want to know what okay. a whisper okay. from Harley Quinn sounds like. Could you give us the, the uh, easy one? 
please. Yeah, so not much of a whisper, right? Like this robot does <laughs> not have a whisper. Two volume settings, annoying and off. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I resemble that. But nonetheless, you can't help but like this porcelain doll. It's just part and parcel with the high level of charisma. It reminds me of my childhood. Right? Twinkle in the eye of Gwyneth Paltrow, Gyneth Paltrow Sphinx. I'll ask the riddle and maybe you'll be able to get the answer. And if not, I can help. She I, says. I mean, I don't want to trouble you too much, but you seem like such a nice person and you seem to be having a rough day. So more like a rough. Millennia? A couple of you. Oh, is there something I can do to help? I can, I can give you a, a paw massage. You can turn around and go back. You don't need to go through here. Well, the thing is, I kind of do. If you need to get through, answer the riddle and you will pass the wall. You really seem like you don't want to be here. I don't. And yet, I am compelled not to talk about it. Could you paint a picture? No, the allergy just does not stick to the walls in that way. Are you able just blink to me? If she this just is... blinks to you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that and is, you finish your sentence. That it's is fine. not for now. <laughs> You're like, I'm done. Is there a way we can assist you from leaving this place? Just wink if we're able to. You don't even have to make an insight check as a group to see that the Dino Sphinx wants to wink at you and yet cannot. Mm. Is forbidden from doing so. We will find a way to release you from this place once we have completed our mission. Then if you pass the wall, you'll want to go to the right first. I appreciate that. But you will not succeed. I could not succeed. You are an odd group, though. Most assuredly odd. Thank you. My mother says I'm special. <laughs> Caraptus collects the odd. So your fate, if you pass this wall, is death or enslavement. And I do not know which is worse. Because she's still a cat. So that is what happened to you. You attempted to pass through and failed, and you have now been enslaved. I am a gynosphinx, <laughs> and I love knowledge and lore. I seek riddles and puzzles that I may test supplicants to areas of great knowledge and power. And I felt prey to a riddle that I had not heard and could not devise the answer to. And I now serve my penance by sitting here, warding off travelers who are not smart enough to not answer the easiest riddle in the world <laughs> and gain access and entrance to certain death where no new knowledge can be found and no secrets can be gleaned. Well, group, I say we have this riddle, we get through this place, and we release you from your curse. I will sit here. I'm pleased to see what you do. Round she is, yet flat as a board. Altar of the Lupine Lords, jewel on black velvet, pearl in the sea, unchanged, but air changing eternally. Oh, I know what that is. Can we huddle in a group and discuss? You huddle in a group and discuss. Yes, <laughs> I love it. But now your arm is around the shoulders of Vulcan. You missed it. While you were gone, there was a branch of friendship that happened. Cool. Yeah. So like, I'm okay putting my, I'm okay with it. Right. It's the moon. The moon. The moon. The pizza pie in the sky, as they say. Can I check my... <laughs> memory bank and verify their answer with myself. You are not the robot of the group. <laughs> no. I mean, like, I would like to do an intelligence check. Do a history check. Oh, history? I did not. I know, but that's the, that's literally this game's version of that sort of uh, thing. This is good. This is the game's version of Google. But it, it, well, in some ways, but also there aren't a lot of skills that relate to these elements uh -huh. that if you were playing a game like a World of Darkness game or whatnot, it would have an Enigma skill that you could be skilled in. Six. <laughs> so you're not especially aware of the moon as a fish folk. Yeah. And so it's that it power. controls the waves. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what runs your world. Nope. But your time on the surface has gained you good at mm -hmm. understanding and knowledge of what this disc in the sky is at night. It does seem possible that the answer that Thesis is offering and Vulcan is supporting is correct. I too support your... But you could also go to the Gynosphinx and be like, whoa, wait, wow, we give you the wrong answer. What happens? You know? Oh, didn't she already tell us what happens? She didn't say what happens if you give the wrong answer. She just oh. said what happens if you give the right answer. Oh, we should know that. What happens if we give you the 
wrong answer. The wall remains. And if it is a poor answer, I may laugh. That Ooh. would break my Ouch. heart. I don't want you to laugh at me. I quite like you. You just I wouldn't hurt. be laughing at you. I would just laugh at the answer you gave. I'm okay with that. Well, Thesis is the moon. <laughs> that is the right answer. One supplicant did answer pizza, and I did not laugh at them, but I did laugh. I didn't say the pizza pie joke. His name was Pizone, and <laughs> he did not make his way in. It appears we are one obstacle forward from releasing you. Yeah, there's a magical tink. Not that really any of you kind of see anything, but the storyteller speaks of this wall of force that dissipates before the group as though it is like, you know, that wash of colors or the like a bubble that pops. You can see kind of the oily film of the bubble in the light and it pops. He describes this beautiful shifting wall of force that suddenly evaporates before the group. But you always don't see anything. that Like in the actual story, that doesn't happen. There's nothing Thing. There never seemed to be anything between you and the Gynosphinx because you never really got too close mm. and you're still 20 feet back as you get closer and the Gynosphinx nods and shifts a little bit and you can walk right up to the Gynosphinx if you'd like. What would you like to do? Can you leave now? <laughs> no. Once you've passed for answering correctly and all three of you have said moon, you may all three pass through. The wall of force will return. What if you walk through it at the same time we walk the other way? No, I am compelled to remain. The slave of duty. <laughs> <laughs> Gave your word. Sorry. <laughs> so this is a large creature, you know, fills up that 10 by 10 space. You can make your way around through the sloshing water. You can see that her hindquarters and her tail is definitely sodden and soaking because it's in the water itself. She doesn't have enough gear to really get herself out of the water at all times. And she's stuck in this one spot. That's so sad. I feel so bad for her. It is. And I thank you for that. She says to you. Oh, she has. <laughs> She says, uh, especially as I'm getting very close to my millennial littering. I'm just mm-hmm. trying to think like they just wait for forever, right? Gynosphinxes yeah. don't have to move too much, too much, so they don't have to use a litter box more than once every millennia or so. And yeah. I'm just getting very close. To go and pee. That's what all the water is down here. <laughs> <laughs> She's waiting so she can go use the litter box, uh, return back. Doesn't want to miss any supplicants to the wall. Right. I mean, slave duty. And before you lays three passages, one to the right, and they're not, they're like at an angle. It's not 40, it's not 90 degrees. It's like a 45 degree angle. I will sit here. I'm pleased to see what you do. What would you like to do? Well, we trust the gynosphinx, don't we? Mm-hmm. So we'll go to the right. Yeah, I agree. Head to the right. She says, uh, watch your path and beware of what lies beneath the water. When you have recovered your item, I will see you on your return. Which seems to indicate that if you go down this path, you're going to do whatever you need to do on this side. And then you have to come back down this path to get to the next, go to the next one. Before we proceed and leave you in your place, are you able to confirm if I am able to safely consume this LG as a snack? I am a keeper of secrets and guardian of knowledge. Do you have any knowledge to barter or trade with that I might then pass on such knowledge to you? I have knowledge. <laughs> yeah, I got knowledge. Vulcan's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. <laughs> you should have asked her about Karaptis. I'm hungry. Awesome. <laughs> I carry all the knowledge of under the sea. Share that which you think I may not know, and I will pass on my knowledge if it is worthy enough. (laughs) Every time a group of my people pees underwater, it creates a wave. (laughs) Yes, I am aware of this cultural comment. It is not true. The moon is what controls your waves. (gasps) Got him. As it changes the shape of the planet we are on. So it's not that the water is actually moving. It's that the entire planet itself is changing by the pressures that are exerted from the gravity of the moon. But what is a group of your people call? A tideling. This is not knowledge I knew. You may eat the algae. It will provide you neither with nourishment nor an enhanced understanding of the world. But it will also not harm you. It is of zero nutrition value much like celery wonderful i appreciate your knowledge that you have shared with us you leave yep after awkward goodbyes like i'll oh, see you in a <laughs> bit i'm you're not going anywhere yeah. continue yeah. Torch continues to gutter. You have maybe half an hour left on this torch. And you proceed down towards uh, (laughs) the dark embrace of this next tunnel. And what happens next and what you choose to do, we will find out next time. Next, Tim. Do 
This concludes this episode of Tavern Tales. Our intro and outro music is the song Tavern Tales by the Bad Billy Band. You can find out more about the Bad Billy Band on iTunes or at www.badbillyband.com or follow them on Twitter at Bad Billy Band. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to leave us a review on iTunes or find us on Twitter at Tavern underscore Tales. We'll be back next week with more of the adventure. I like the Sphinx. I feel so bad for her life. I came up with all my potions. I actually realized I should have just made one of them empty.